like to welcome each of you to, um, to our Bible study this evening, and I'm so glad that you are with us. For those who are in our congregation, as well as those who are joining us on YouTube or Facebook, we will begin this evening with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. And Lord, as we look into your word this evening, Father, has, as Jesus opened up um, their minds to understand the scriptures, the disciples, Lord, after his resurrection, I just pray that for us this evening as well, Lord, that you would just touch our lives through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Um, just to let everyone know, Pastor Peyton um, is doing really well, and he will be back with you this Sunday, Lord willing, as well as he will lead next week's Wednesday evening Bible study. So we'll conclude our time together this evening. If you could, look at, um, join me in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 22, and I would like to read with you verses 9 through 14. And then we'll talk about each verse, as well as just recap a little bit about um, what we talked about on Sunday. Um, on Sunday, we looked at verses 1 through 8, and remember two important points that I brought out. Um, Consider the test that God designed, and also that I said the importance of um, reading the chapter, the scripture in its entirety, and not just focusing on the one verse. And consider the test that God designed. This test was unlike any test that Abraham had faced. And it was his ultimate test. It seemed like everything in Abraham's life was preparing him for this ultimate test, wasn't it? And then the second reminder um, for us as individuals, as we walk the path of faith, that none of us know when we'll experience the ultimate test in our lives. And, and I sort of challenged you that, you know, walking daily in obedience with the Lord prepares us for that test, whatever it may be. Um, we are today is the key of how we will respond to the test of tomorrow. So it's important for us, and, and, and you know, the emphasis of daily walking with the Lord, that's so important and crucial in our lives. Even though sometimes we think that it is mundane, you know, mundane and routine, it's important for us to walk in obedience. And then the second point that I really stressed as well was the test that God had designed was matched by the trust that Abraham had displayed, wasn't it? Abraham displayed that level of trust. And then what did we conclude with in, in verse 8? That the two of them went on together. That father-son relationship. And of course, you remember how I challenged you, either as parents or grandparents, that are you walking along with your children, being examples of faith to them, or even being able to invest in the next generation as far as your grandchildren's lives. I mean, it's beautiful to see a godly heritage, and I wish it was something that we could genetically pass on, but it ends up coming back to each individual making that personal decision for Jesus Christ. But it's so important for us as grandparents, as parents and grandparents is to be that Christ-like example to them. So, you know, we, we're getting, we're seeing that in Abraham and Isaac's relationship. All right, let's look at verses 9 through 14 now. And when they reached a place that God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord cried out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up and there in the thicket, 
he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the place, the Lord will provide. And to this day, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. Now, the first point, I'm going to bring out three points this evening for our Bible study. The first point is the place to which they went. Notice in the scriptures so far that we had discussed even from Sunday morning, it was a progressive walk. Okay, if you remind you, um, you know, the, and then by the time we reach verse 9, they reach the destination. And um, it was not seen as the place they reached the place. So we get, again see that progression of their walk. And so when they reached the place um, that God had told them about, Abraham built an altar and there he arranged the wood on it. Now, you and I, all of us, have special places in our mind, don't we? Hmm? Perhaps, maybe, it's where we committed our lives to Christ. Or maybe it was where we were baptized. You know, how many of you can tell me where you were baptized? Yeah, sure. Sure, okay. And maybe it was the place where God spoke to you in a particular way. All of us have special places that, that mean, that, you know, have special meaning to us. And this place for Abraham and Isaac will be forever etched in their minds. They'll never forget Mount Moriah and what happened there. And what was this place that makes it so important to our study tonight? Um, you know, along with the physical locality of the place, in which we'll talk about a little bit later, I also wanted to talk about the spiritualness of the place as well. I want to recognize it as being a place of obedience. And it was Abraham was in the place that God had told him about in verse 9. It was a place of obedience. He had reached a destination. You remember in verse 2 where, where God told him to take his son, your only son whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah, sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Okay, notice the generalization of that as far as going to the place, the location. And then it was interesting, God's instructions... Listen to this. This is very interesting. God's instructions first told him to go to the region, and then he would give him specific instructions once he reached a destination. Isn't that like us in our lives, that God wants us to be obedient to the general in order to reveal to us the specific of things sometimes? Or how about even us as parents? You know, um, we want our children to obey us, and, you know, and you weigh heavily on the direct, excuse me, the instructions that you need to give them and give them specific instructions and see where they obey. Have you ever given them a, um, progressive instructions in obedience? All right, well, first of all, I need you to meet me here in 10 minutes, okay? You didn't tell them where you were going at the next place, but then you told them to be back here in 10 minutes. And then upon their arrival of 10 minutes, then you ended up taking them to the store, maybe to the kitchen store or something like that that they wouldn't necessarily want to go. But, you know, it's sort of, you know, it's almost like a progression in that, in that way. So um, Abraham is an example to us in following the path of faith. All right? How much more this evening... Would we discover the abundance of God's love and adequacy of God's provision if we only in daily ensure one thing, that we are walking in the path of obedience? So that first point about that place at Mount Moriah is that it's a place of obedience. All right. The second point I want to bring out about Mount Moriah, it is, it's a place of sacrifice. And, um, and, and looking at that, um, you know, some have never scaled their mountains because they have never been obedient in their region.
But now if we're looking at it as a place of sacrifice, it's the place where Abraham is going to sacrifice Isaac, isn't he? I mean, this is the destination. In verse, in verse 6, we see that um, Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. You remember us talking about that Sunday. And, and he himself carried the fire and the knife as the two of them went on together. Notice it was a progression, not of just of Abraham, but it was also a progression of Isaac walking along with him. And you remember how I brought out the point of John 19, verse 17, when it talked about Jesus carrying his own wood to the, to the, um, to the cross. All right? And, and how important that was. And it was, and it was really a picture but, you know, for this, the point I want to bring out, that is it a picture of a father and son, they're embraced in conversation, and they're embraced in each other's love, you know, carrying between, carrying between them the materials for a sacrifice. All right? Both of them, you know, both the offerer and the victim walked together. Walked together. And, and it shows you the type of relationship that Abraham had with Isaac. Abraham and, um, excuse me, obedience and sacrifice on the path of faith cannot be separated. Obedience and sacrifice, they go hand in hand. Do you recall your verse um, in the verse in Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, that tells us, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and what? Take up their cross and what? Follow me. Exactly, in that way. So we are already talking about there, even in our lives, it's obedience and sacrifice. All right? Now, my second point is this. The provision that God had made. The provision that God had made is in verses 10 through 14. And how exciting is this? And we'll, we'll go back to midway through verse 9 first. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. And verse 10 tells us, and He reached out his hand and took his knife to slay his son. Isaac must have not only embraced his father's faith, but I believe he also embraced his father's God. Now, what did we describe possibly what age Isaac was? Between 13 and 14, right? Sort of in that area. All right. So now, how did he get Isaac on the altar? Do you think he wrestled him up on the altar? No. I believe Isaac crawled up on the altar and was the willing sacrifice. I believe that Isaac not only saw his, the demonstration of his father's faith, but also Isaac embraced that faith in God that his father had. And so as you can see in the transparency of Isaac's life, of his willingness to even lay on the altar itself. Isn't that exciting? And, and though it's, you know, all, though it seems kind of, you know, to a normal person in society, that's, that's crazy that, that, that a son would trust his father so much in that way that he would lay his life on the altar and believing what his father said. Not only just believing what his father said, but what God had promised. And if Isaac went on by himself, um, Abraham had what? Effectively communicated his great faith that welled up in his heart. And the Lord will provide. He also had that faith. I don't know how he's going to do it, but I'm sure he will do it, my son, because you are the central part of what he's going to do in the future. So Abraham was still clinging to that promise. And he actually believed that his son would be resurrected, you know, if, if he killed his son on that altar. 
He believed that. He took God at his word and he was, you know, that sure of his, in his faith that God was in ultimate control. And you know, so often we can, we can take that picture and just see it just as a Bible story. But if anything, it's more of an example for us in our lives. And, and I can't tell you personally how much this event touched my life. And, and seeing this example of faith in God. And, you know, it, and, and it also, you know, goes to point and show true, you know, in relationships to our family and committing our children to the ways of the Lord. You know, it, it's, it moves, it moved me in that, in that way, um, and it's very exciting. And so what I also want to tell you that verses 9 and 10 does not give us a picture of resignation, Okay, it doesn't give us a, a sense of resignation, but if anything, it gives us a picture of consecration. Consecration to the Lord. Okay, that, 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 that Abraham was going to offer up his son to the Lord in that way, a consecration. And, and that, you know, that, that gives us the challenge ourselves, you know, of offering up our lives and our hearts. Of course, we did it initially, when we accept that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. But what about days in which you're challenged? Every day we have the opportunity whether, when we get up of whether we're going to serve self or God. You know that? And we make that choice on a daily basis. Will I follow the ways of myself or I will walk the path of obedience in which Christ has called us to? It's a daily, you know, it still happens on a daily basis. Even when you're retired, you have a choice. Do you not? Yeah. And more, and more examples of what you could do. So in, in seeing that, um, do you and I this evening have a strong conviction that the Lord will provide just as Abraham had? All right? That, you know, that thing that you're going to lay on the altar in your personal life, you're going to turn that over to the Lord. You know, are you truly going to turn that over to the Lord or are you going to snitch it back off? And seeing the resolve that Abraham had towards, you know, God and, and sacrificing Isaac, he was, he, was, he was ready to go. He was going all the way with this activity, this sacrifice. So, and then what happens in verse 11, if we go back to the scripture. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven... And not only did he say Abraham once, but he said it twice. And, and notice there, and, and you know, here I am, Abraham replied. And then, of course, we get the instructions in verse 11, I mean, verse 12. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him, but I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. What type of devotion does that give? And the excitement. And then, not only that, in verse 13, Abraham looked up there, looked up and there in the thicket, he saw a ram caught by the horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. Now, notice this in that verse. The provision of the ram was perfect in its timing. The provision of that ram was perfect in its timing. And not only was it perfect in its timing, but it was also adequate for the task. It was adequate for the task. God had provided the sacrifice. God had provided the sacrifice. And he, can, and he brought glory to himself through that sacrifice. And it also, by God providing the ram in that way, what did it do for the sacrifice of Isaac? It ceased it, right? It ceased the sacrifice of Isaac, and he was re released, and what happened? The ram was what? Put in his place. Put in his place. So see, God still required the sacrifice. But God had the substitute for the sacrifice. Does that not remind you later on in history 
approximately 2,000 years later, what would happen? Praise God that he followed all the way through with that sacrifice of his son. Anyway, we'll get to that in just a few minutes. And you know, in verse 14, the exciting part of it is, Abraham named the place. And what did he name it? The Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. How sure are we of that statement in our lives? When we faced some pretty dark times in our lives, have you reminded yourself always that the Lord will provide? And He may not provide in the way that you suspect Him or anticipate Him to provide, but He will provide in His own timing His good and perfect will for you. And there's a lot of times, and I, I'll confess too, that we don't understand. We don't understand. We just have to obey and walk by faith. Walk that path of obedience. Walk that pathway of faith. So Abraham called it, the Lord will provide. And to this day, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. It's also a reminder back in that verse at the right time from Romans chapter 5 verse 6 at the right time when we were still powerless Christ died for the ungodly and God's perfect timing his son came walked among men was sinless and all offered himself up to the Father in that perfect sacrifice and paid for the penalty of our sins. You know, it was so appropriate, the song that, that the worship choir and Phyllis arranged for, to sing for Sunday. And, you know, he could have called 10,000 angels. Could you imagine that? But he chose to die alone for you and me. And, and just the way that, you know, resonated and sounded and it just just encouraged us as, as brothers and sisters in Christ with that song. It, it's just beautiful in that way. Can you imagine what Abraham and Isaac said to one another afterwards? Whew. That was a close one, Dad. Could you imagine that? Yeah, I couldn't even begin to imagine that. But yet for you and I, how often do we wander, wander in our minds about God's provision? God's provision and seeing it take place in our lives. Hmm? His adequate provision for us. It's almost miraculous. If any of you have ever read the accounts of George Mueller... And how the orphanages, all the, the children that he fed, and they never went throughout all their years of ministry without a meal. Whether somebody broke down in front of the orphanage and had to get rid of the entire load of milk, or somebody knocked and opened up the door and provided a meal for that children. And I'm sure George Mueller had camel knees, the amount of time that he spent before the Lord praying for these orphans and these children. And what a testimony to God throughout the years of ministry that he was involved in and the many lives that he had changed. That God changed through someone that had faith and walked obediently to him. You know, it's exciting in seeing that and what the Lord can do even through us when we walk through in an obedience. The third point, and this is a large subject, and, and you know this could have its own sermon and its entirety self. And the third point that I want to bring out is the picture this provides for us in the New Testament. All right? Augustine's once said, the new is old, the contained, and the old is in the new explained. 
And he was referring to the Old and New Testaments. Again, I'll say that. The new is old, the contained, and the old is in the new explained. He, and he was referring to the Old and New Testaments of how much they was a fulfillment and a prophecy of one another. The offering of Isaac in Genesis chapter 22 points us towards the sacrifice that Jesus did on Calvary 2,000 years later. And contained in this event is the foreshadowing of one day what, God, what would happen between God the Father and God the Son. And, you know, a lot of people don't consider, you know, God being that involved in the crucifixion. And if you go back to um, Isaiah chapter 53, and those verses beg to differ, because what they tell us, you know, that um, it, it, verse 7 describes the Son, all right, and verse 10 describes the Father and His activity during this time. And, you know, and Christ was punished. And, and you know, I once shared a sermon that, um, that Christ emptied God's cup of wrath. Okay? And, and, and God's cup of wrath still exists, okay, for those who have not trusted His Son as their Lord and Savior. And that cup of wrath exists because of God's righteousness and His holiness. And He can't stand sin. Holy God. And yet, you know, He poured it out on His Son. All right. And then, you know, it's one of the things that God can't do is see through the blood of Christ. And, and you know, so, and if we are washed in the blood of Christ... We are presented to Him, you know, that living sacrifice as, as obedient Christians to walk in the ways of the Lord. When He sees us, He should see the blood of Christ. And if we acknowledge Him as our Lord and Savior. So look at that in detail on, on your own time. But out of, you know, Isaiah 53, look at verses 7 and 10 of that chapter. 7 deals directly with the Son. And verse 10 tells us of what the Father is doing during that time. Okay, so some of the points that, that this picture provides us is this. And of course, there are many others. The first one being a father offering his son. The second one being the son dead for three days in Abraham's mind. Because in Abraham's mind at the time, Isaac was as good as dead because he was going to sacrifice him and he was walking in obedience to God. The, the fourth point is a substitution. Okay? The, you know, a substitution for us in our sins. Number five is an actual sacrifice. An actual sacrifice did occur on Mount Moriah. Okay? Then it was on Mount Moriah, also in the same vicinity place, where 2,000 years later, God's own son was offering, was offered. How many knew that? That it was also on Mount Moriah, in that area of vicinity, that Christ was crucified on the cross. Okay? Thus, and, the, and the, my last point to bring out is, thus it was a shadow in the birth of the Hebrew nation, the grand event, the nation was born to bring about. All right? Now, in my closing, I want to be able to tell us one thing, and, and this is my invitation this evening to those who are listening by Facebook or YouTube or even us as a congregation. In, in John chapter 8, verse 30, uh, four, excuse me, John chapter 8, verse 56 Jesus made a statement about Abraham. And this statement and, and was made to the Jews, okay, who was questioning at his time his deity. And in looking at this verse, you know, um, in questioning his deity, he actually gives a compliment to what um, Abraham what Abraham, how he lived his life. 
So John chapter 8 verse 56 tells us this. Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. He saw it and was glad. Now, there was even some scrapping and debating before Jesus even made that statement on his deity. He actually called them on the carpet as far as being children of Abraham. And, and you know, instead he said they were disobedient children and children of the devil. But then he ended up acknowledging their heritage that they were descendants of Abraham. But then he gave his ultimate, you know, statement on Abraham and his faith in believing in Christ was the Son of God. And, and in seeing this, and he welcomed this. And where, whereas this, this made them so bad that, you know, that he stated this. And then he said, you know, in verse 58, Very truly I tell you, Jesus answered, Before Abraham um, was born, I am. So even then he said that he was before Abraham. And then that really made them irate, and they picked up stones to stone him. But my invitation tonight is, if, if Jesus said this about Abraham, what is Jesus going to say about us and our walk and belief in him? And he, um, you know, the thought of him seeing my day, he saw it and was glad. And it was a compliment towards him. But the challenge is the response towards us. Whether we get to see Jesus when we close our eyes to this world and open them to the glories of heaven, or if he comes back in the rapture first, we are all going to see Jesus. And the direct question that I have for everybody tonight is, what is he going to say to us? Is he going to, you know, is it going to be said of us that we saw his day and was glad? Or are we going to see his day and be fearful? Where are we at? And this is for everyone. Where are we at in relation to seeing Christ? My prayer is that you look forward to his day and anticipate the arrival of his day. Whether you go to see him or he comes back to take us home. My prayer is that it will bring your heart rejoicing and not instead of fear and condemnation. Would have, should have, could have. So that's the question tonight. Where are we at? Where are we at in our steps of faith? Where are we at in our walk with the Lord? My prayer is that you accept His Son, Jesus Christ, as the atoning sacrifice for our sins and make Him Lord and Savior of your life. How important is that? So that you can rejoice at the time of seeing Him. Would you bow with me in prayer? Our Heavenly Father, we thank You, Lord, for Your Word this evening. We thank You for your test towards Abraham. And Lord, how we were able to witness Abraham obeying you completely. And Lord, we see how his son also walked with you and was pressed with his father's faith. And that he also entrusted his heart and his life to you. I just pray, Father, that whatever trial or tribulation that we may be experiencing in our lives, that we would ultimately turn it over to you and put it on the altar, Lord, and, and sacrifice it to you, yielding our total wills to you. Father, we know how important obedience and sacrifice are in our lives. And Lord, help us to walk 
the path that you intended for each of us. Lord, so when we experience tests in life, Lord, that we can surpass them because of our trust in you. I just thank you, Lord, that in the vicinity of Mount Moriah, Lord, that your son became that ultimate sacrifice to draw us into that relationship with you. And it is through him that we have that relationship as well as eternal life. Thank you, Father, for your son Jesus. In your name, amen.